Hello again everyone, the Paramodeler here with another kit review. Today I am reviewing the Tamiya Ducati Desmos Adici. It's officially licensed by Ducati of course. Uh, once again, wonderful box art. Um, flip it over to the side here and you have the two liveries for the two different racers. Flip it over to the other side here and have a look at that. Once again, it's just showing us probably a smaller version of the top box art and to me kit number 14101 and here we have a cross section of the bike so you can see what's going on with that so let's spin her around let's open her up and see what kind of goodies we have inside set the lid off to one side here and with our first bag we're gonna pull all that uh, let's just pull it all out and set it to the side for now get down to those decals or sorry not the decals the decals you're seeing now but let's get down into the instructions and we'll start there So on this sheet here we have the deckling marking detail so it gives you all the decal numbers of where the markings are supposed to go. Uh, for both racers, uh, number 65 you have on there on one side and number 12 back on the other side. So everything you need there for the proper deckling for each racer. And here we have our instructions. And of course we have the nice blurb by Tamiya about uh, the Ducati history here of this motorcycle. So at the bottom there we got tools required. You're going to need your cement, your pliers, uh, cutters and some tweezers. Those are just a short list of things that you're going to need. So let's get right into her. Up at the top here, to me, always has their paint callouts here with their paint codes, which is excellent because you can follow that along because they have it uh, pretty much marked on every part of what color it needs to be painted. So, first page here, first step one, we're going to be putting the motor together, uh, clutch covers, so on and so forth. We're going to be cutting some hoses for this one. As you can see here, my fingers are running across. Uh, this is an actual one-to-one -one scale so if you take your hose and you put it up against there you can cut it and that's the exact length that that hose needs to be and that hose is in the bag here and I believe there's only one size yes there is so like I was saying lay the hose down and cut it to size let's get into part section number two Part number two is showing the, I believe, air box going together, mounting to the motor. Uh, number three, we're starting to see the frame come together, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, frame, then the motor mounting into the frame. Pay attention to the tubing because it does go up through the frame. And then we get down into uh, putting together the handlebars and front fork assembly nope just the triple trees for the handlebars that's you can see my fingers on the triple tree and we're going to put uh, windshield holders up at the top moving on to part number five we're going to be putting together the fuel tank and the rear seat housing and part number six we're going to be doing exhaust and seven more exhaust showing attached to the motors with uh, you know to me is infamous screws and screwdriver part number eight we're putting the tank and the seat holder to the bottom of the engine slash frame mounting it with uh, the Tamiya screws and also has call outs here for deckling the top of the handlebar and step number nine we're going to get into the radiator radiator colors and so on and so forth moving on now to step number 10 we're going to be putting together the brake rotors and 
attaching them to the rim and see I got rotors on both brake rotors on both sides attaching them to the rim and then to the rubber this is the front tire showing moving along to part number 11 this is where we're gonna start painting our front forks their colors uh, there's to me a mix colors here to help give you that uh, infamous uh, gold looking fork uh, bottom end then uh, shows us how to attach in part number 12 the forks into the triple trees up into the handlebars and then connecting the brake calipers and two side locking pins that go into the forks to help retain them and then we have the front fender going together and what else do we got there uh, can't make it out so let's move on to see the top of my dirty hat and I apologize I'm doing a voiceover my video didn't turn out or sorry my audio didn't turn out worth, worth a crap so I'm having to re-record my audio looking at the video as we speak so here again it shows you cut lines for uh, the tubing and paying attention to where they're going and step number 14 is showing us the air box and the driver's display with the deco going on to that and please make sure you pay attention to that because decoing it afterward is an absolute pain and you know what the part 15 where i'm running across right now that's the to me is infamous rear damper assembly just uh love that assembly and we're going with the rear swing arm assembly then it shows us attaching the damper the chain all that stuff step number 16 17 and then putting together the rear chain sprocket onto the rear rim and the rear rim onto the rear rubber uh, handy, handy little trick there the rubber uh, scuff the rubber up and it'll look more realistic uh, you know scuff it up with uh, some nice uh, wet sandpaper and shows us the rear fender kind of going through that and then it shows us the bike stand uh, really nice bike stand this one a little more thick a little more uh, not so used to the you know to me a uh, round tubing one this is a little more thick and uh, bulky which is nice and then uh, moving on to the seat uh, installation and the rear cowling and going on to part number 22 shows us how to put the side cowlings on and we're also going to cut some more of the Tamiya line and once again paying attention to where that is attaching uh, you really want to make sure that you get that right at, at this stage because uh, trying to do it later is mental uh, here's the under cowling with two exhaust uh, outlet ports which get uh, glued into that and then that under cowling gets fed through the exhaust and then attached to the frame and that's that that's the instructions let's move the instructions out of the way and have a quick look at uh, the decals I believe these are cartograph decals. Uh, let me have a quick look here. Yes, they are cartograph decals. Should do the lay down nice and flat. Uh, especially uh, like the added touch of the uh, red lines for the rims. That way you don't have to paint that red line onto the rim. And here we have the rub transfer decals for the tires. Two different libraries. We have the white and then we have the blue Michelin as well so let's just get these packaged up and uh, set aside so they don't get dinged up until we're uh, ready to use them For deckling I recommend getting yourself some micro sol and micro set uh, if you haven't used these you should use these these help lay down the decals absolutely flat and give great adherence um, you know primarily use these for aircraft for getting uh, decals to lay down flat on 
on wing so it shows up the rivet detail and panel lines but when you have curved body curved body moldings uh, like on these motorbikes you're gonna need this to help lay down that curve uh, it just helps you put it down so much easier and for putting the model together I don't think we need anything more than the Tamiya extra thin cement uh, like I said all the parts go together uh, perfectly there is no big gaps in them you're not gonna need any bigger thicker glue for this model other than extra thin cement uh, if there is a couple issues uh, I like to use a Vallejo putty and I use the Vallejo putty with the narrow tube uh, that's number 401 on their putty but it comes out just through the eye of a needle at the end there and you can lay down such a beautiful line come along with your q-tip cotton swab cotton bud whatever you want to call it afterwards uh, wet it up and it'll get rid of that no problems so I was saying before let's get the decals out of the road there's the little baggie with the tires the hoses the infamous to me uh, red screwdriver and all their screws I'm not gonna open this bag at this time I don't want these parts all over the place until I am actually ready to build the model so let's get right into the body bag and I'll call it the body bag you know not the greatest choice of words but it is for all the body parts the front cowling is attached to that bag let's open her up his famous staples love them not good by good bags though I mean they're, they're thick enough which is great and as we get into looking at these parts you'll see there's no flash there's no silvering uh, it does have a little bit of veining in the parts but that veining uh, doesn't translate to any flaws in it once painted uh, you'll see those if you don't paint it and you just kind of clear it um, you know if you're just a newer modeler or just, you know this could be your first bike you're building maybe you don't want to paint the body parts and you just want to keep them red you can do that because this bike molding is in red I mean but by all means the the frame parts there they should be painted their colors and the body parts panels you can leave them their colors like the top of the tank uh, leave them you know that red but you know definitely paint the bottom part of that tank black because it's supposed to be black uh, just for realistic purposes right you want to try to make a model as realistic as you can uh, you know going across those tubes there there's no flash the ejection pin marks they're you know out of sight out of mind you're never gonna see them you know once again another another great uh, part spur from Tamiya and here's your front cowling we'll keep that in the bag for now why not keep it from getting scratched up let's move on to the next parts bag here in this parts bag we have pretty much all the motor pieces to put the motor together uh, as you'll see here 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 so on um you know and then there's your rear stand for the bike uh the forks off to the side of my finger there and then what else do we see we got exhaust on this tree or the front forks there you go i'm running my fingers on them and the front radiator where my fingers are now and those are the radiator uh, outlets to go into the motor for cooling so it'll be the cooling pipes here I'm showing you all the exhaust pipes which are on this tree uh, once again everything looks good no flash you're not gonna have to remove any major burrs uh, you know once again another good spur get into the last bag well, the last two bags the windshield is in here 
Uh, great windshield. I'm going to keep it in the bag. No seam line whatsoever. A quick polish on this before you decal it and it's going to turn out amazing. So let's just put that off to the side into the into the box. And on this sprue we have the rims as you can see. Uh, we have the rear swing arm, uh, the air box, uh, the seats, the rear fender, the front uh, brake rotors, uh, calipers, the chain and sprocket, and a few other dudes and dads. Oh, and on that one, we also have the handlebars. Uh, handlebars here, quick trip, or quick tip, not trip. Uh, a toothpick will fit into those perfectly on the end, so when you're going to airbrush them or paint them, you can slam a toothpick into the end of them and then you can paint the whole part and then prop it up into your uh, parts holder. But once again looking around the, the whole tree everything's good there's no flash. Uh, Jactor pin marks as I saw were good and out of the way. Uh, I'm kind of not happy about the one seat um, but I mean with a bit of a sand scuff up uh, you shouldn't see those marks as you can kind of see I'm not sure if you can see them but they're there and could use some fixing up so there you have it there's another review of uh, a tuning great to me uh, kit and um, maybe I'd show you one of my Tamiya bikes here of course this is not a Ducati is a Honda the, the Repsol racing team um, when I was talking about the microsol and microset as you can see these round surfaces here uh, if you didn't have microsol and microset you wouldn't have a hope in hell of of laying down those decals without them cracking breaking or otherwise uh, trust me I've tried and then I learned my lesson and went out and bought the microsol and set I just really love this paint uh, livery. Uh, the rims are the fluorescent orange color. Uh, you could see that uh, gold to me a fork color there down at the bottom. Uh, I also wrapped the exhaust in the decals, the carbon fiber decals that came in the box. I think maybe next time I got something that calls for a carbon fiber decal, I'm actually going to try to airbrush my own carbon fiber look just to make it a little more realistic to me uh, this really looks too cartoonish uh, I just left it but uh, you know I had a little fill a little bit of a body line in the center of the gas t gas tank that was it but other than that I mean you know great to me a kit so if you've got any questions comments concerns or if you want to leave me uh, drop a line down below uh, it would be greatly appreciated. Uh, thanks for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe. Take care and have yourselves a great day.